a case study of water. So, the properties, the thermodynamic properties. So, these are thermodynamic properties of water we are interested to compare. Thermodynamic property, then uh, result from experiment and result from molecular dynamics after generating so many conformations and then taking the ensemble average over them, ensemble time average. So, the th thermodynamic property, the first one uh, is the potential energy of water in uh, kilojoules per mole. Now, let me see the values. So, the experimental value, so this is in kilo joules per mole. So, the experimentally measured value of U is minus 41.5. From MD, the measured value is minus 41.4. So, you just can see how uh, reliable or how accurate the simulation can be. Uh, the next property uh, is the density, gram per cc. The experimentally measured is 0. Point, the accurate value 0. 0.995 and ex in, from MD we get 0. 0.998. Diffusivity, the diffusion coefficient in centimeter square per second of water. Uh, experimental value is 2.4 into 10 to the power 5 to the minus 5 and what you often from here is 2.5 into 10 to the power minus 5. So, as you can see we can reproduce the experimental data uh, very well by choosing the right force field parameters. So, this shows the robustness of MD simulation technique to generate the microstates and after we generate the microstates we take the ensemble average or the time average to get the properties for which experimental data are available. So, the advantage of the computer simulation technique is that we not only calculating the thermodynamic properties and matching them with the experimental data, we can also uh, look at, we can always go back to our microstates and pick up each and every microstate and see what transitions had happened. When you take the ensemble average, we just get a single ensemble average or time average value. Uh, that does not give the microstructure, microstructural information or the, or the transitions happened into the system uh, that we are tackling. But those information are available in my computer simulation data. I can always go back to my time evolution in information and from here I can get that this is the uh, structure of my protein ligand complex where the binding was the most, or binding was the strongest versus the one where the binding was the least. So, what um, um, uh, com uh, computer simulation techniques uh, are uh, giving is that they are first getting the confidence that my technique and the models are uh, good enough and therefore, my I can reproduce experimental data. Uh, plus it is giving the uh, giving more insights uh, uh, in s i g h t s it is providing uh, more insights about 
the system about my system's microstructural uh, information. So, I think that is it from statistical thermodynamics uh, part uh, of this course. So, I will just want to summarize and if I summarize, I would say that we started uh, with the definition of statistical thermodynamics. We said that thermodynamics and statistical thermodynamics, they basically uh, can be applied to the sense system, where thermodynamics, the classical thermodynamics gives relations between uh, various quantities, thermodynamic quantities, statistical thermodynamics tells us uh, uh, the, the magnitude of this thermodynamic quantities in terms of the very constituent of the system. So, statistical thermodynamics assumes that a system is composed of the tiniest particles of uh, atoms and it looks at how these atoms interact with each other and based on those atomic level information, it predicts the extent or the magnitude of the thermodynamic properties. So, where thermodynamic properties give the relation among the thermodynamic quantities, statistical thermodynamics tells why uh, the thermodynamic quantities are more uh, in one system versus they are less, they are less in another system. Uh, so, statistical thermodynamics basically gives the microscopic information of a system, whereas thermodynamic uh, thermodynamics gives the information of the macroscopic quantity. So, in the in, in the first few lectures, I talked about microstates and macrostates. Um, I defined the microstates and macrostate. Um, uh, in a quantum system to start with a small system uh, and there uh, first we have looked at the Boltzmann distribution law uh, which is a very important uh, uh, distribution law uh, in statistical thermodynamics and we have um, seen um, that if we can find out a microscopic quantity called partition function that partition function is related to uh, can be related to any thermodynamic quantity. So, we written down uh, some of these relations, uh, how partition function is linked to uh, thermodynamic quantities like entropy, enthalpy, uh, Gibbs free energy, Helmholtz free energy. And uh, we have shown that once we get the partition function Q, then all these thermodynamic quantities can be easily obtained. Uh, but in that context, we have seen that uh, the initial formalism um, had some problem and those problems, um, uh, one, one, one pr pr problem in the formalism was uh, the entropy. Uh, the entropy was not coming right and Gibbs found that out for the first time and he named it uh, as Gibbs paradox and later Gibbs paradox was resolved by reformulating um, uh, the, um, the formalism and that was uh, the Boltzmann era. So, until the Boltzmann era, uh, people could, um, could use uh, the partition functions and get the thermodynamic quantities for small systems. And in that context, we also have uh, looked at the partition function for monatomic gas. But then when we come to uh, a bulk liquid system or our system of interest, uh, um, our systems of interest to our uh, biological molecules and for biological molecules um, the, uh, using partition function in terms of the quantum states were very difficult to use because quantum states uh, just for the ground state uh, could be uh, in the order of 10 to the power n for n is number of particles. And therefore, for a classical system uh, like our biological system, uh, large systems, we uh, had to take a parallel 
um, parallel parallelism where we basically um, we basically uh, got the partition function uh, not in terms of the uh, quantum states we got the partition function in terms of the different distribution of our system so when you basically got different distributions of our system just by defining their uh, r and p by defining their positions and momentum we generated uh, uh, we, we, we often different microstates. So, once we uh, generate different microstates uh, in a classical system and, and that that was ensemble approach um, uh, by Maxwell Boltzmann uh, particularly by Gibbs. So, Gibbs introduced the uh, um, ensemble uh, approach uh, and in that ensemble approach uh, uh, we, we can generate if we can generate different microstates of a system and then uh, we can take their average and we get the ensemble average or the time average and that is the uh, thermodynamic quantity what e, what are measurable experimentally. Uh, so, we, we defined uh, the ensemble average uh, of a thermodynamic quantity, we, uh, we define what ensembles are, we define what ensemble average is, we, un we define what time average is and then uh, we, we, we basically uh, wanted to see how we can generate different microstates. So, uh, by definition if we have different microstates we can just take the average over all these microstates and get the ensemble average. But then uh, how to get all these microstates? So, in that context we introduce molecular dynamic simulation uh, which is a computer simulation technique and there by solving Newton's second law, uh, we generated different microstates uh, of uh, our system of interest. Um, we, we found that uh, we could generate uh, as many microstates as you want uh, depending on uh, what kind of computer resources we have. If you have a very, um, a very powerful computer resource, we can generate, you know, uh, millions and billions of microstates and if we take average over all these microstates we get that time average and the, that time average uh, matches very well with the experimental data. We took an example of liquid water the bulk water and we found that for liquid water the MD uh, calculated values uh, match very well with the experimental data. Um, apart from molecular dynamic simulation we also briefly talked about Monte Carlo simulation technique. Uh, Monte Carlo simulation is another computer simulation technique where we can generate new conformations uh, of a system uh, using random number generator. Uh, while in molecular dynamics we solved uh, Newton's second law, we uh, had um, we, we basically solved differential equations to generate new uh, conformations uh, in Monte Carlo we use random number generators, um, uh, random number generator to obtain new conformations. Um, so, uh, uh, molecular dynamics and Monte Carlo both are having advantages and disadvantages. Molecular dynamics simulation advantage is that it has the time information. So, you can always go back and pick up uh, the particular conformation and find out how that conformation is linked with all other conformations. Uh, whereas, in Monte Carlo and therefore, mo molecular dynamics simulation would be much more expensive. Um, in terms of computer resources, uh, whereas Monte Carlo simulation it does not uh, have the it does not uh, keep the history uh, uh, in the in the in the memory. It just looks uh, it just looks at the preceding um, uh, uh, preceding configuration and generate the new configurations. Um, so since it does not have the time information, uh, and Monte Carlo simulation is uh, faster than uh, molecular dynamics. Uh, so, these two techniques uh, helped us to generate uh, several microstructures, several microstates and once we have the microstates uh, we can um, get, uh, we can calculate the average property uh, of any thermodynamic quantity and that is the whole information I want to do uh, 
give you from statistical thermodynamics aspect of biomolecules. Thank you for listening.